It's a pleasure to be here tonight, and uh, I thought we'd just start out, we, you know, we've been out of Bible study for a few weeks now, and uh, it's time to get back with it. And the core of the thing is that I want you to, I want to pick up a little bit on uh, Bishop's message this past Sunday. First of all, I ask you, why are we here? Why are you here for a Bible study? To learn. Stop and think about it. Why, why are you here? And it uh, goes back to what Bishop was talking about in his reflection. Have you looked up what the definition of a reflection is? It's pure core meaning. It's what Bishop was talking about Sunday. It's not a haphazard thing. Reflection is a deep look into it, it has a connotation of looking deeply at what you're thinking about. It's talking about stopping and, and thinking things through. It's talking about being a quiet time, a quiet time of reflection, a quiet time of digging in and thinking through whatever subject you're reflecting upon. Now, what I want to throw out as a challenge, we're going to do this a little bit different than what our other Bible study was. We're not going to be going... Uh, a chapter by chapter, verse by verse, like we did in some of the previous ones. This is going to be more of a thing. What I would like to do is try to bring in things that are current events and try to work so that we can reflect upon what's happening around us. The reason for that is, is simple. If you, don't, if you don't understand where you are, if you, if you don't really reflect upon where you're at in your relationship with Jesus, then you're going to have a difficult time finding your way through things if things turn sour. And they definitely look like they are. I mean, I'm not the optimist that the bishop is. He's far more optimistic than I am, I'll guarantee you. Because I, I, when I look at special in the world, well, just like today, inflation... Came, a report came out today, 8.5% increase. We have a president that stood up two hours later and said, I'm up here with the number zero. There's no inflation. I mean, that shows you the dire straits that our country's in. A lot of you know that I flew my flag upside down for, well, it's been, over, been about two years. The reason being, an upside down American flag, if you're in the military, you would know that's a sign of distress. And uh, we, we even had some neighbors that complained to the sheriff's department that I had my flag upside down. We had a sheriff's deputy come up to the house and said, I need to turn my flag over. We're not turning the flag over. However, I, I did. I don't know, you were down there today. I don't know where you noticed or not. My flag's right side up. The reason being, because of what occurred with the three major rulings that come out of the Supreme Court. Of course, everybody knows on the abortion ruling. That's a major turnaround. The other thing was that there was a ruling that schools can, uh, Christian schools can obtain government money to operate. That was the case up in Massachusetts. And there was another... Uh, court ruling that they upheld that the pastor in California that refused to close, that he wasn't liable. They couldn't sue him. So when we had, uh, and excuse my voice, I'm really struggling with uh, pollen right now. Uh, when we had three rulings, I thought, okay, we're, we're getting to the point to where maybe we have some turnaround coming. And so I put my flag back up right, and we'll see where it goes. Um, when you're, there, there is different studies of eschatology or different theories on it. Does everyone know what, when, if I say eschatology, you know what I'm talking about. The, I went back and looked up the Greek word. Um, eschatology is the meaning of eschato, which means last. And we all know what a ology means. Biology is the study, of, you know, that's all Greek. Ology means the study of. And the thing of it is, we live in the now, but not the yet. I want you to stop and think about that when you go home. You're living in the now of eschatology, but you're not living in the yet. About 60% or 
40% of the prophecies have already been fulfilled. There's about 60% to go. Roughly, probably about half and half now. I think I was some old numbers. But the thing you don't understand is things happen daily that set the stage for end time events to occur. And in our Bible study, uh, those of you that are here remember we're talking about, I talk about the incremental steps. Folks, we're not just going to wake up tomorrow morning and be in the tribulation. That's not, that's, that's not biblical in my mind. The thing of it is, as the tribulation is going to come. Jesus tells us that himself. And, and if you go back to chapter 24 in, Gen in uh, Matthew, uh, when Jesus is talking to the disciples and they ask him, when is the end time? And he tells them, you know, we've got wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And those things are not just going to occur one morning. We're going to walk into this gradually. And I know a lot of you believe that we're all going to get raptured out of here before the bad stuff really happens. I personally do not believe that anymore. I at one time did. I feel now that we're going to be somewhere in the mid-tribulation is where the rapture will occur. And the thing of it is, when we, when we talk about things and current events that's occurring to set the stage for all these things that's going to start happening before the tribulation, the wars, the rumors of wars, the pestilence and, and everything. We've already seen COVID come through and seen, seen how that works. Uh, wait till this fall. It's going to, they're going to be on top of this again. But the thing of it is, 10 years ago, there would have been absolutely zero possibility for the, end time, or for the, for the Antichrist to step up, take effect tomorrow morning, and say, you can't buy and sell without a mark, right? Stop and think about it. Impossibility at that time. Today it's possible. And that's the incremental steps I want to talk about as we, as we go into this in each, in each Wednesday evening is bringing up current events as another step, another step that God has in His plan. Uh, Pastor and I have talked about this before. We kind of view, uh, I told Pastor one time many months ago, I kind of view in times that God's playing chess. Now we know He's going to win, but it's, it's really interesting how He moves the different figures on the chess table to bring about what He wants to do. A good example is going to be what we're seeing in the Middle East today. Uh, some folks think that the uh, Battle of Gog, Magog, and Ezekiel 38 and 39 is the same battle that's going to take place in Revelation. I don't think that's true, and we could spend a, a period of time explaining why that's not true. But the thing, the point I would want to make is how God makes things happen. We saw, we read so much of the history of the Old Testament how God uses people. He tells us specifically in Ezekiel that when he's talking, telling Ezekiel to be talking to Gog, I'm going to put a hook in your mouth and bring you to the Mideast War. That's what he's going to do. So it's back to trying to point, make, make you think about things that's happening on a daily basis that will set the stage for everything that we're told is going to happen. Especially when you when we look, Ezekiel's the best, or not Ezekiel, but Daniel is the best book, I believe, for you to understand what I think the term is right or slow stated as Jesus eschatology. Jesus eschat he preaches it. Jesus tells us in in the New Testament, he refers back to Daniel specifically, and that's an important part. If Jesus feels that Daniel's the one that told the right story, then I think that's, you know, his, his is probably the, the leading book to go to to start understanding what's going to happen. Um, we're we're going to run short time tonight, and I just want to throw out things that's going to be kind of an overview of how we're going to be doing this. Um, the, we, we all desire for our future. And you need to reflect upon the fact that the only thing that matters is your relationship with Jesus. 
Nothing else really matters, and you need to reflect upon that and don't get caught up in the day-to-day -day stuff that's going on. And, I, and I'm, I've been one of the worst of those. I've always been a controller. I was always trying to make things happen. Uh, I was pretty good at my job for 20 years, and I was good at it because I made things happen. I was always working that way. And that, that got into my personal life at the same time, and just the way I worked. And it, it took me a lot of work to get away from that and start living for the day and living, you know, I, I caught myself this week. Uh, there were some things that was going to take place next week and I was running through my mind, different scenarios and everything and I caught myself, I was driving a tractor and I said, don't do that, doesn't matter. What, it, it, it had nothing to do with my relationship with Jesus. It I had all to do with my relationship with business here, doesn't matter. So why am I wasting time bush hogging, thinking about what's gonna happen in a week, possibly? I don't know, different, different options. I have no idea what's gonna happen, so why waste time thinking about it? You know, I'll be prepared for it when it comes. But that's, that's back to this reflecting thing. Bishop talked about sharpening your ax. I look at this, I'm going to say instead of sharpening your ax while you're taking time out and taking a breath, at the same time you may want to think about trimming your wick. Why do we trim a wick on a lamp? Any of you old folks back here remember when we used to trim oil lamps once in a while? It burns more efficiently. If you, if you don't trim your wick, it starts making soot, it clouds up the, the inside of your glass, your flame gets tall, starts smoking, you trim the wick, what happens? The light gets brighter. You got a smaller light, but you got a clean glass, flu, and your light's brighter. So along with what Bishop was telling us this past week, uh, I want you to think about trimming your wick at the same time. Because the, the thing of it is, uh, I had a thought that a shining light in these end times will be the ones with answers and those that have a close, close relationship with God. God knows this. Jesus knows this because he cautioned us. Cautioned us to what? Don't be deceived. Right. Don't follow the false. You, how do you know what's false if you haven't educated yourself? And that's one reason why we're doing what we're doing. You've got to educate yourself in what's happening on a daily basis and, and what the, the near term looks like and know what Jesus said is going to happen. Because there again, Bishop's talking about sharpening our axes so we can go out here because there's going to be a harvest time. All right? You want to, shot, you want to sharpen your axe with knowledge and discernment you want to trim your wick so your light shines bright when if things get bad, people will look and see the light and know where to turn. That's important. That's what Jesus was talking about. He wants you to live a life as close to his as, he, as you can. And that, folks, it's hard. And it really, really takes a lot of reflecting upon your daily life to get there. You know, I, d I just really love Bishop's... Uh, message Sunday and uh, the one thought I had too you can only keep your bearings if you understand what to expect prophecy will give you a road map and don't get caught up in conspiracy theories get caught up in facts you have to be careful there especially in this day and age of discerning between what's fact and what's fiction you want to deal in the facts Like I said, Daniel's a great place to start. Um, it's, it's, it's full of eschatology and Isaiah, Ezekiel, and, and Zechariah too. But Daniel's a really great place to start. Isaiah, Ezekiel, and, and Zechariah, they just really are supporting information in, uh, for what Daniel brought forth. And I say that again because Jesus the King refers back to Daniel. If you go to Matthew, go into Matthew especially, I think Matthew's about the best read on it. Uh, 
Jesus talks about, refer to Daniel. He, he quoted Daniel. The Talking about Jesus' eschatology, the modern mainstream religions do not preach that. You need to understand that. These mega churches are not preaching a Jesus eschatology. Most of them are not preaching eschatology, period. It's more about entertaining people, and it's more about getting people in, making people feel good about themselves and being happy in the world, seriously, if you look at it. You can sort that at the shaft out pretty quick and need to. I've, I talk to the Bible study class all the time about, here's the thing, if you're watching things on the Internet, and we, we watch a great deal on, on the Internet as far as uh, uh, religion, the first time you turn someone on and you're watching it on the Internet and they say something that you know is not biblical, turn it off. Don't ever turn it back on again. If, if they're going to preach one thing that's non-biblical, then don't waste your time. He just told you right there. And, that, and that's where Jesus warns us about being deceived. Is, is don't, don't follow them. You've got, to, you've got to be smart enough to realize that. The only way to get smart enough is to increase your study. Um, be aware of your surroundings. Be optimistic. Be like, I mean, he, Bishop's a great example. He is for me. But reflect, again, I'll say it, reflect on what's important. And if it's not Jesus related, it's not important. That's pretty easy to figure out. Talking about the other thing I wanted to point out, one thing, um, the, my class that, or, that Tom and I had, um, we follow Jonathan Kahn really closely. Have any of you watched the Jonathan Kahn update? Okay, if you want to watch something interesting, and it's just a little bitty smidgen of what this man puts out, uh, look on YouTube. It's called a prophetic update for July 2022. His name is Jonathan Kahn. Jonathan is a Messianic Jew. Uh, he's a pastor of a church out in New Jersey, and we've tried to get him here. I, I offered to buy him a plane ticket and put him up and get him out here, and he, he did tell us that if he gets close, he'll give us a call, but he's really tremendous. He's written quite a few books, and we used his books in Bible study for about a year and a half. We followed it, but anyhow, what's interesting is this. Bishop talked last Sunday about uh, the prayer for the lady in the, that is, looks like she's recovering. You know, great thing. Corporate prayer works. On uh, September 26, 2020, there was a, uh, a big prayer meeting on, at Washington Monument in D.C. So on Saturday... We talked about it. You guys may not remember, but we talked about it in, 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 the, uh, in the Bible study at that time. And what it was, it was a day-long event. Jonathan Cotton had actually put most of it together. But uh, to show you how God works, and we talked about this so much, and, and I'll keep trying to point this out as we do these on Wednesday nights. God does things on specific dates. God works in a big circle. Everything he does is completed. There is nothing that he starts that does not get completed. And you can go back. Jonathan was such a great teacher on that in that he can show you how many things. Clear back in history that God, you can see God completing a circle with certain things. But anyhow, this, this mess, this thing that happened, we just now had the Amy Comey Bryant was a deciding vote for the man on abortion. That's why Trump put her in. The interesting thing was, you took in and you talk about corporate prayer, is that on that September 26, at 5:04 in the evening, was when they got around to doing a uh, finishing the day up and praying that everything they had talked about. They had multiple speakers. 
that all the prayers that day would be answered. And it was mostly, about all of it was just about strengthening the United States. Well, they, they ran four minutes of past five, which was interesting. They just ran a little over time. But the interesting thing is, at exactly four minutes past five on that day, Trump's in the Rose Garden announcing Kobe Bryant. This all occurred at the same time. Excuse me, I get I get emotional on some of this. When 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 you think about how God works, but they weren't even none of this was tied together. Absolutely none of it. Trump at four minutes past five in the Rose Garden announced that Amy Comey Bryant was going to be his pick for Supreme Court. She wasn't. She that was a nomination, the official nomination. At exactly the same time that they were praying corporately, and they were all blowing shofars at the end of the prayer. So anyhow, that's he talks about that in this this thing here. But if you really want to start understanding how God is working in the end end times and how His timing takes place, that's part of the reason why I say I don't believe we're going to wake up tomorrow morning and the tribulation is going and the Antichrist is standing in Washington D.C. Just not going to happen. When you start understanding how God flows through his actions, how he moves his chess pieces, you start getting a real understanding. Okay, real quick, and I'm about out of time. The only thing I was going to bring up tonight, uh, as far as end times, if someone had a question on something, be glad to answer it. But the big deal is, which I, I told my Bible study class uh, at the end, you want to pay attention to the Mideast. That's where it's going to happen. And this last week you saw uh, Gaza throwing, you know, they're shooting rockets back off again and everything. But key on the northern border. Don't worry about Gaza. Gaza is not going to enter into this thing hardly at all. The northern border with Syria and Jordan is where the action is going to take place. And that's where we're getting closer and closer by the day, I believe of the Gog-Magog War that Ezekiel 38 and 39 talks about, the stage is being set for that almost to perfection because it includes the things that Russia's doing today. It includes the nuclear uh, operations in Iran. And there's just so much of the Ezekiel 38, 39 description of what's going to occur is happening right before our eyes on a daily basis. So pay real attention. If you go to watch any news, watch the Israeli news uh, and watch the Muslim news. The Muslim, you've probably heard of it, is Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera is a good news source. Those people speak the truth. They don't candy things up. They don't, they don't have a political agenda, I don't believe. It's just a, a Muslim, it's a combination of Muslim news agencies around the world. And they report stuff. I, I've been following them for years now. I find them very, very informative, and it's really interesting to get the Muslim perspective on what's going on because they've got a certain part to play in this too, we believe. But other than that, we all know the war still going on in Ukraine. We know inflation's blowing up. Um, yeah, there's still, there's still famine and pestilence coming, and it looks like this winter is going to be a pretty rough winter, especially if you live in Europe. We may get shelter from in some of this. Um, I did notice today, uh, just this afternoon, some of the major steel and uh, aluminum companies, one company that uh, provides 20% of the aluminum for the world, uh, they're laying off people. The steel companies are laying off people. Reason? Demands going down to tubes. China's in serious, serious financial trouble. You don't read that in the news. They're very serious. You, they, have, uh, they had a huge real estate bubble. We talked about it months ago at the end of the Bible study. Um, real quick, can I have one minute? Bishop, sure. to give you an example of this, 
We talk about increment steps that take place and we'll keep trying to point those out on how the Antichrist one day can stand up and say, you're going to take my number or you're not going to buy or sell. I'll give you a prime example of how it works. This last week, I read an article on a young lady in China. The reason her real estate bubble has burst is, number one, it's been graft and under, you know, people stealing. But here's what they did. They started this social score in China. We talked about it extensively in, in Bible study the last two and a half years. They've got it in place. They know how much money you have. They know where your money's at. They know where you live. They know who your neighbors are. They know, they know everything about you. And you get a social score based on what they know about you. Well, they come down and they told this lady, said, hey, you've got so much money in your checking account, we need you to go buy a, buy a home. She's a young professional, single mom, young professional. You need to go buy a home. You've got enough money to buy a home, you go buy a home. So she, she didn't have any choice, she did. Well, the pressure they put on. So she went and she purchased a home that had not yet been built. Well, a year and a half later, she's still paying the mortgage on a home that hasn't even been started because that company through graft and everything went bankrupt. That's what we talk about in Bible study, the, the, the big real estate companies are going bankrupt. So she says, okay, I'm gonna quit paying my mortgage. So she did. Well, guess what? That knocked her social score down. She went to put her son in school this year and they said, nah, your social score is not high enough. We can't let you enroll him in school. Her son could not go to school because the government forced her to buy something, let a company take the money, let her pay on it for a year and a half, and then when she said, I'm not doing this anymore, took her son out of school because her social score is not good. That's how it works. That's the way this, this Antichrist system will work, something similar like that. Now, you think, well, stuff like that can't happen in the United States. Already happened. Because how many of you have heard of an ESG score? Okay, it's an economic, social, governmental score for businesses. The big banks all around the world now are using these scores on companies. A company has to show that they are not, in, it, it's environmental, I'm sorry, environmental, social, governmental. A company has, and they're all vying to get their scores from it. That's why all of this woke stuff's happening with the companies. It ups their ESG scores, is exactly why it's happening. If they don't have a good ESG score, the bank's not going to loan you money. It's being done today, worldwide and right here in the United States. If a company doesn't ante up and do all this transgender stuff and do all the gay stuff and do all the climate change stuff to affect their environmental score, and it all goes back to what the, the, um, the world control, looking at one world government and what the, what's being pushed by all these uppers including the United Nations. That's the United Nations, what is it, 2030? They have a 2030 agenda. That's part of the United Nations 2030 agenda. It's for them to be able to force companies to do what they think needs to be done on a worldwide basis. So we're just a small step away here in the United States because right now, this is current news. What's the government pushing? I've seen it written four or five times last week and a half. Anybody been seeing digital dollar? Federal Reserve is working on a digital dollar so that our paper money will no longer be used. It's going on elsewhere. Israel, last week, Israel come out, and right now you cannot buy anything in Israel for cash. You can't pay more than $1,730 in cash. If you got $5,000 and you wanted to go buy a $5,000 truck off somebody, you can only give them $1,730. The rest of it has to be electronically done. They're against because they're gathering all this data and they know what you're spending. It's, it's here, folks. It is really here. 
I apologize for rambling on. I'll turn it over to Bishop. I hope you all will come back. We'll be getting more into specific uh, current events, and I'll be drawing biblical relationship to those things that's going on. I'll, be pull I'll bring out biblical backup for why it's important. Thanks a lot.